Hi guys, I'm just trying a quick tutorial. Excuse my voice if I sound um, funny, but I'm just getting over a virus and chest infection. Hence why I haven't been putting tutorials out, but I thought I'd give it a go tonight. So I'm just doing a really simple one. Um, all I've got here is um, Black Fimo Pro, and I'm using Pardo Translucent simply to use it up. But it's exactly the same amount of both pieces. So I'd say that's just over half an ounce. Um, and the, that one was a quarter of the Pardo block, so that should give you an idea. So I've chopped that one up ready. I'm just going to chop this one up. Um, in a minute, though, when I um, add some mica powder, I'm going to um, put a mask on so I won't be able to speak. So I won't bother to record that. Um, you'll know what I'm doing, I'm sure, if not. There's plenty of tutorials that show how to just mix the mica powder. Excuse me. <coughs> I'll just get it started quietly um, so you can see. And then, just in case anybody is new to it... Um, and then I'll just turn it off and catch up with you when I've mixed it. Okay, so for this, I am literally just going to mix these together. They're both being coloured, covered in the same mica, so it makes no odds. I'm just going to give it another bit of a chop. And when I add the mica, the more I add, the easier it will be to chop it smaller because as the mica hits the sticky surface area, you know, obviously it starts to um, not stick and then you can make it smaller. So I'm going to put the mask on now. laughing at what I'm trying to do honestly um, when I've got enough mica powder on I'm going to add some liquid clay and some gold acrylic paint so you'll see me mixing it all in together and then finally I'll be mixing in some gold leaf so that will be the process
Okay, I'm back with my microphone now. Um, hang on, I forgot to attach it. It'll start clicking in a minute otherwise. All organised as usual. Um, so anyway, I'm back now. And as you saw, I added some gold paint. It was a pearl gold. Um, the liquid clay. And I added one sheet of gold leaf. A small one. Um, I don't know whether to add a second. You know, I'm going to add a second because it was small. Oops, a daisy. Now it's flying everywhere. Come here. Oh, I've just been missing clay in so much, but it's like... Can't use mica powder, it can't, might get in your chest, can't resin, might get on your chest, you know. So I've just ended up having to leave it alone. And I just sat there tonight and I said, oh no, I've just got to do one. So this is it. So hopefully that's enough of everything that I can bring it together. I'm trying to be sensible here and not get both hands mushed up. So, look at me with blooming gloves and masks and everything tonight. Okay, so try and bring it into a block of sorts. Now, I could have waited for all the paint to dry. I've tried doing it both ways. Um, and to me, it's just as easy to do this now. Anything, because the mica will, anyway, spread over the clay. So you've got a few options on how to get rid of that sort of smear look anyway. And um, I just want to play. <laughs> so, okay, so that's about it. I'll just remove this glove. Because it's Pardo and Fimo Pro and not Cernit, I don't need to worry about leaving it to rest. If it had been, it would have needed to rest. So what I'm going to do now is hope it won't break up. And I'm going to put it onto the tray where I'm actually going to be cutting it from. Okay, so that's the plan. So I'm cutting it probably about 5 mil. And I should turn it. Stop it squashing up too much. And then I'll turn it again for the last cut. And see how this looks. Could have cut it thinner, but I'm quite happy with it being one. So basically it's just black and gold with a little bit of translucent in. That's how it's it's going to look. I have already tried doing some um just pure board and I haven't resin them or anything yet because um, of my chest so they're not completed but I thought tonight <laughs> I can open the back door wear a mask um, and give it a go okay um, let me just I'm just going to clean up and then I'll be back in a sec Right, that's a bit tidier. So I want to bring it together as well as roll it out at this point. So I'm going to use a wet one just because it, it stops the clay from sticking and um, just to get it going. Makes it easier, I found. Because I need to get it down to a thickness I want as well. If you're doing it like this, you can use... Um, the measuring sticks or lollipop sticks if you feel you you need to and the thickness you want it is totally up to you I mean you can have it quite thin for earrings or thicker for a pendant but I'm more interested in um, this is the stone we need to make things 
but um, I'm actually more interested in doing the little additions. So that's my aim. Now I think for most of this, that's probably about the thickness I want. Okay, so that's, I would guess that's two to three mil. Which would be thicker than um, your thickest setting. Mine zero is my thickest. And this would be a bit thicker than that. So, we'll see. I can just uh, get some of that gold off the top. I've got some alcohol here, so I'll just give it a gentle rub. Not that it's a problem, because you can remove it at any point. Ooh, all I'm doing now is smearing it. Just wanted to be able to see it quite clearly. You can see around the edge. This is lightly worse because the paint's not dry. So if you want to leave the paint to dry, that is the actual sensible option. I will get this sorted, no problem, because I've done it before, but I didn't have the patience tonight to let it dry. Just making it worse, aren't I? <laughs> Dear me. So I'm showing you how not to do something at the moment. <laughs> some up as well. So that's my first goof, goof of this tutorial. Second one could be not putting the lid on the alcohol. I did that um, a few weeks ago with um, nail varnish remover, the acetone. And I knocked it straight over a load of finished pieces. By the time I picked them up, they'd already started to crumble and melt underneath. And they were just all ruined. There we go. That's got rid of some of the gunk. That's what we needed. Right. So now you can basically see the pattern again. Right, I want to um, cut out a couple of, what I could say, naturalish looking slabs. So, I like rough edges and rugged edges. I don't like everything smooth. So, if I'm looking here, this would be quite a good rugged bottom for a stone. So, I'm actually going to hand cut here about just over two inches so I'm going to cut straight here and make sense as I do it well you'll have seen the picture on the front of the tutorial I expect by the time I do it um, and I'm going to sort of jagged cut that down this side I don't want it too straight because I want it to be kind of have a natural edge to it okay so that's going to be one slab I may manipulate it just a little bit to make these edges a little bit more interesting. Okay, so that's a slab I'm doing. Um, I'm also going to make some earrings, which was the main thing I was going to do with this tutorial. I don't want to use uh, cling film or anything. I want a nice solid stone look. So all I need to do now is find a nice place to do two of these. So there's the earrings done. I am going to do some other earring. I'm trying to think of everything I can do flat. Um, yeah, everything I can do flat because I don't want to lift this back up off the tray. I'd like it to cook on the tray. So I might use this cutter. Now is this going to? I don't know if this cutter is going to work. It might yank the clay, but I really don't want to. Should I, I'm going to risk a bit of cling film then. I can't take the chance. I think what's going to happen is that small middle bit is going to cling to the clay. So just for these, I will round the edges. So anyway, I'm going to do these 
and a few more bits and then I'm going to put them into the oven at the manufacturer's recommended temperature and then I shall be back. Hold your horses, I'm back again as usual. Um, I've just had a think while I was doing this and I'm actually going to do one cutter using um, this yin yang cutter. I can't remember offhand where I got it from, I know it was Russia, but I will leave a link below for anybody that needs it. But there are quite a lot of them available now on Etsy, they're not hard to get anymore. So I've got a yin yang, I'm going to be cutting out one, and then I'm going to be keeping that as a premise for another tutorial on its own, okay? So if you are interested in doing the next one and you've got one of these, if you want to cut out, if you haven't got one, get a stencil and just draw it out and do it, you know? Okay, so I'm off to cook for real this time. Okay, so they're all out of the oven now, but these are the ones I'm focusing on for the tutorial. So I just wanted to show you. Now these two I've just done. This one I haven't. The other paint is all on the top where I goofed, but you'll probably get some anyway. Um, I'm just going to show you. I've just got some acetone here, which I've just sprinkled all over the table. And uh, I'm just going to give it a wipe and you'll just see it come off. Now, I'm just being lazy and not sanding. You could sand it. Um, with this type of thing I don't have a Dremel or anything so for me I'm doing it this way but it's just a tip if you if you want to easy you, I mean be careful what you do it with what items because obviously the acetone does take away the top layer of the clay but it's just um, a little thing I do sometimes when I'm in naughty mood Right, yeah, I think I'll just get a tiny little bit more of that black. Okay, so hopefully, if I lift them all up, you can sort of see the, the translucent effect. And obviously it's not been treated yet at all, so it's still quite dull. But I think it looks pretty. So anyway, next step. Next thing you're going to need is a little bit more black clay. Um and also something you're going to be needing for this you don't have to use this you can do whatever you like but if you're following the tutorial all the way i'm just showing you this is my thing so i'm going to be using a deco color premium pen and um, which i saw on um another site there's a, a lady nana's bling things and um, she's absolutely lovely she's really worth a follow and her last tutorial she did this and used this and it really inspired me to get one and think what can i do with it so thank you rosa um but anyway back to this okay so i'm just gonna bring in this piece of black clay i've rolled out on a number two i haven't been too fussy about it what i want to do now is i'm going to create of course, they're kind of bales, or they look like bales. And I'm going to do a texture sheet. Now, with the gold pen, I'm only going to be aiming to touch the top of whatever texture I created. So I'm purposely going to choose to use this one, I think. Yeah, I've got that right. To get the effect I want. Um, nothing's bigger than that little square, so I don't need anything more than that. And I'm just going to push this one on. It's uh, one of those ones that doesn't slide all over the place. But, I mean, use any texture you want. Um, obviously, no, I need a bit more pressure there, don't I? Dear, dear me, it's one of them nights. Start again. I think I've just got no strength at the moment. was a good old bash so now what I've done is I've looked for something the same sort of width as this which is this one it's just an ordinary round cutter um, and I'm going to be using that as the sort of four bale so I'll just look for a nice thick piece there take that out and then for these I've just used the wrong size haven't I yeah, I've just used the wrong size. Um, I could probably cut it out there. Because it's not going to fit there. It's not my night tonight. I probably should have left it a few more days. Still, never mind. 
Okay, so that's the right size. And then for these earrings, I've also got another one the same width, and I'm just using them for sort of a mimic bail, I suppose you'd call it. Okay. So, that's them. So I don't need the little fella. Now. Right, so looking at this now, um, you can sand and tidy up the edges if you want. I want to leave this pretty rugged and normal looking, if you know what I mean. That's the back, by the way, at the moment, um, which is actually looking more translucent than the front because I've taken the shine off with the acetone, but that'll be fine. So let's go for this one. So what I tend to do with anything like this, because we're actually going to be using this as a bail, I need to work out round about where the halfway mark is going to be. So they, I want them to match evenly. But I also want to make sure I've got it central. So I'm just playing around with it a little bit at the moment. So I've got an idea. Now I'm going to need a little bit of liquid clay, obviously, for both sides. Put a bit there for the other side to add in a minute. And now, um, I just use these, um, they're just like barbecue um, kebab sticks, can't think of the word. So I'm just going to slip that in there, central, anything that size. I mean, there's so many things you can use for this sort of thing. And then it's going to kind of slip in there. So I want it to hold, and then round the back as well. I'm just going to add that other bit of liquid clay. It should stick quite well because there's a lot of um, grooves and indents in this, so it's not like it's really smooth. So first of all, I need to centralise it and then even it out because it's gone a little bit misshapen there. I also want to make sure it's still big enough that I can get a, a cord through. So it's just a case of playing around with it till you're happy. I'm trying not to, I've probably got the wrong side, I should actually, do you know what, I'm not happy with that, I'm going to turn it round, because the other side is much nicer, so that can be my back, and then the front, it's got a much stronger texture, so that's better, so now, I just need to make sure it's level, so I know that when I put it now to bake, I'm trying to add pressure without adding pressure, if that makes sense, just very, very gently, Um, yeah, so I just need to make sure that when it goes on the tile to go in and rebake, I'm happy that it's straight, which I am. Okay, so that's how it looks at the moment. Now you can leave it like that. You can add something to it. Um, I may add a little diamond just there in the centre. I'll see what I think. Um, better than that, that's that one done. Then with these, it's going to be very similar. I'll just get some more liquid clay out. It's easier to do it that way now. I just did it. Okay, same again. Now this one's more, um, I don't actually need to use the bale here. Um, we'll actually just be putting a, a jump ring or something through, but it's to give the effect of, okay, so it's much, be much easier to do. So I'm just adding a little bit here, a little bit there. And make sure it goes on central. Just want it to look tidy and central. Come on, play the game, mate. And then I should do that with both pieces. I might actually, though, when I've done it with this one, I may actually add the little holes for the jump rings now because I just think it might end up being easier. So that's something I will do now. Also, I did mean to say, when you put these into the oven, the, you know, when we were making the stone, I forgot to mention, um, one, you needed to, I needed to burnish it before they went in, and I didn't burnish it on screen. Um, and two, I forgot to mention that, um, have some ice cold water ready to throw these into, a, you know, a second they come out of the oven, because that will really, really help with the translucency. It does make a big difference. 
so that's those done and I'm, like I said I'm just going to make a little hole in the top for the jump rings put these back in the oven and then I shall see you on the other side okay so they're out of the oven and I'm just gonna um, I've just started doing the back of this just to show you and I've got this gold pen um, and I'm just literally trying to do it so you can see I'm literally just following the top pattern like that it doesn't matter if you get it a little bit wrong it's very organic but as long as you're mainly you know the aim is to recreate the texture with the gold highlight so I mean if it's very thick you can just run it across like that but if it's not that high and some of the texture is some isn't you have to be much more careful Okay, so it's that one. And I'll just do the same with these. So starting on the top here. Hoping you can see this. Um, it's quite hard to do anyway without trying to hold it in front of the camera. I normally have it much closer to me. So I'm doing my best here. Okay, so I'm... See, so I've gone over a bit there. You can remove it with alcohol if you're fussy, but um, to me, I, I always like that sort of orga organic, um, slightly shabby look, if that makes sense. It's just the way I roll. Just try and make sure you don't miss any. Tiny little one there. Is it? <laughs> I think, oh no, there's one there. There we go. Okay, so that's that done. And I'm going to do the same with the backs and the other side. Then I am literally going to resin them and stick some findings in. And then I will show you the finished pieces. Okay, so I'm back and they're out of the UV resin machine. I've just stuck this on some cord to give you an illusion of it being a necklace so you sort of get how it works. So it, the cord just slips down there. So, and that's what I'm, I don't know if it, you can see it clearly, um, I don't know if you will, that's like, I mean, about, I like that sort of rough organic edge, um, but it's quite translucent, and I like the way the gold shows through the translucency, um, I'll just show you these earrings close up, okay, The only thing I'm still going to do is I am going to apply a um, matte varnish just over this gold um, just to uh, protect it. I also did another one, um, but I didn't put the gold on. I just finished with a rub and buff in black. So that's just showing you something else you can do. And this was where I just started playing with um, my idea for doing a yin yang for the next one. But I won't be doing a base like this. Um, I'm going to use a different technique. So hopefully um, you find this useful and you might try it. And I really, really like the pen. It looks so much nicer um, than what you can see here. Okay, thank you ever so much for watching. Um, and any excuse for my goofs is I'm not feeling well. So I, ex I expect you'll forgive me. Okay, thanks for watching.